All right, service in your hands. Do you have three or more wall fingerprints? And we're going to look at examples of these right now. These particular um, fingerprint configurations form, as all fingerprints do, in utero between the 14th and 16th week of development. They are unchanging. They uh, stay with you for your lifetime. And you need whorls to be in the school of service. There's also another fingerprint called the peacock, which we'll look at as well, um, that is part whorl. And if you have a sufficient number of peacocks, that can also put you in the school of service. So some of these look like bullseyes, uh, these concentric circles, and some spiral out from the center with the circles growing ever wider, such as a spiral wall. And you can see there on the screen, very distinctive uh, circular shape in the center of the fingertip. Now this one's a little um, more entwined, still has the uh, whorl effect to it. And here's some other examples of whorls. Again, it has a bullseye. Very distinct, very distinct from the other fingerprint patterns. These are fairly easy to spot. All right, peacocks, they're half a loop. A loop is a type of fingerprint, and half a whorl, which you just saw. And they're comprised of the loop and whorl pat pattern, half loop, half whorl. They have a paisley pattern with an eye in the middle. And usually, it's considered a life purpose rank fingerprint when it appears. And there are some examples. You can see the little eye, and then it, it flows out to one side. So it doesn't have a complete circular effect like the whorl. Pamela, is there anything you'd want to comment on about the, the whorl and the peacock? Yeah, the one that's on the left side of the screen looks very, very much like a whorl. Mm -hmm. So it would be easy to think that it was a whorl. And the reason it isn't is because there's some technical things about it. But if you gave it whorl energy, you wouldn't be completely wrong <laughs> because it's right. such a big peacock. Where the one on the right is a much smaller peacock, and you can see it doesn't carry the same energy. So that's one of the things that we also take into account. The big right. peacock is really close to being a whorl. Mm -hmm. It's not a whorl, yeah. but it's very close. It's half whorl. Right. OK, cool. All right, composite whorls. There's a loop going in one direction, while another goes in the opposite direction, like a yin-yang symbol in the middle. And there you can see there's a almost an S shape, particularly the one on the right, the print on the right with the um, the pattern kind of pushed to the edge. It looks like that's probably a thumb, hence it the is. interesting angle. Yeah, it's a thumb, but you can see there's an S right there in the middle, classic composite. This is a smaller composite and uh, a wider composite on the left. Any comment you want to make about composites? Are we going to talk about what they mean later, or is this the time? No, you can't. Now's the time. OK. So composites are on-off switches, meaning that they are a whorl. And when you have them on your fingers, if you have them in addition to the other whorls that we saw, then when the switch is on, they are in alignment with your life purpose, with being in, like having more worlds in your fingerprints. And if the switch goes off, and we'll talk a little bit about what that means, um, then they're more like lower ranked fingerprints in your hands, which would be life lesson stuff, which we're not going to get into all of that. But the switch energy is the big thing about the composites, because as you can see, it literally has energy going one direction and energy going another direction. So it, it's like when it's on, everything is in the whorl energy, and it's all working together. And when it's off, it's like you have something happening one direction and something else happening another direction. And it feels stressful. I have a number of clients who have whorls. And they, their comment is, if you have whorls, then the best strategy for dealing with it is if you notice that the switch has gone off, is focus on something else. Mm -hmm. That's a good suggestion. It's a great suggestion. They, my clients came up with it, so I was really happy about that. <laughs> and I how do they know to. it's, yeah, I don't either. So how do they know it's gone off? How do, what are the symptoms? What it feels like is they're trying to push the river. That's one thing. Or they feel like they're trying to force something. Like everything was going hunky-dory, and then all of a sudden it's not. Like they're working on a project, like say they're trying to write copy for um, something, and they're in flow, and the copy's going really well. And then 
something happens and the switch goes off and for the life of them they can't come up with any language to continue and they feel really stuck. So if they go do something else, focus on some other project that needs to be attended to, it relieves some of the pressure as opposed to trying to force it. Uh -huh, because the forcing yeah. of it is just, it's pushing against the river. It's like trying to float upstream. It's crazy, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Great. Well put. Okay.